What's up, everybody? It's your boy Marsman here, and I'm joined with Langella Kill to discuss the Armored Core 6 review. And in this video, we're going to be discussing the good, the bad, and in our final rating, we're going to give our official scores and whether you should buy this now, later, or not at all. But before we jump into it, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. So Armored Core 6 Fires of Rubicon was a kind of a shot out of the dark when we think about you know, from software games of being that Dark Souls like of genre where it's uh, either fantasy based or mythical in a way. And then all of a sudden when we get the, especially after Elden Ring winning game of the year, we get an announcement of not an Elden Ring DLC that's coming right away or anything. We see a new game, Armored Core 6, which is a re, you know, kind of next installment of the original franchise that has been going on for a long time. And, and I think this was a very, very interesting game all the way around but with that being said let's jump into the good and when i look at my first good i think overall the the customizations of armor core 6 were probably the best aspect of it because the way that the game essentially works is that you you basically control your mech and you can organize really all aspects of it your helmet all the way to your shoulder pads your you know your weapons that you have your legs your torso and even your uh, your charging battery, which allows you to basically have higher level weapons and also like the capabilities of, you know, <laughs> of, of firing these things on rapid fire or you have to let them recharge. And I, I think this is a very, and all the way to colors too. You can customize your colors to whatever extent you want. And I really think that that does give Armor Core, a, like really gives a player a lot of ability to customize the way they play and how they want to really attack these different missions. And I feel like, that gives so much more replayability because now you can say, hey, I can, I want to replay a certain mission or I want to, you know, try a different approach this time. And instead of you rocking with like a, a blade and a machine gun, which is your kind of like your standard weapons you start with, you can go with double bazookas or a laser cannon and rockets like uh, shotguns or magnums, like whatever you want, essentially. And I think that is kind of the best part, in my opinion, about Armor Core is their customization just, just really does land. Um, overall, but Angelica, what's what's the good that you felt for this game? Yeah, I agree with you, and we're both new to the Armor Core series. The old Armor Core games have been worked on by From Software in the past, but uh, you know we're we were big with Elden Ring. Uh, we know about obviously Dark Souls and Bloodborne. So some of the aspects of this game you do feel from From Software and customization is one of them, right? Twenty one different weapons you mentioned. You can adjust arms, legs, boosters, emblems, colors. You can make some really cool looking mechs, uh, mech suits. And it, it also kind of derives off of your weight and your firepower. Like you have to be able to balance those two things on some of the improvements that you mentioned. But gameplay to me was another thing I thought was pretty strong in this game. It runs really smooth. It feels like a legit, I mean, you are fans. We aren't, haven't been Armored Core fans, but we've been fans of Gundam back in the day when we were younger. And this feels like a legit, Gundam game, like your mech versus mechs, explosions, dodging, epic boss uh, battles, large scale boss fights. So that kind of stuff to me really hit on the mark. Gameplay and customization are the two high marks for Armor Core. Yeah, and I feel like for me also the the, the you just kind of mentioned the bosses. I feel like the yeah. bosses were very you know I, sure they they might seem to be repetitive at times, but some of the bosses do have a kind of differences between them that make yeah. them like you need to watch out for specific moves that they might yeah. hit you with and i feel like that is a pretty a pretty cool concept especially with you knowing how fr from software is with their epic boss battles and how important it is to dodge and and yeah. counter attack with a a specialized move to really get them off their you know their stagger because that is kind of the way that the game works it's about very similar to like Sekiro, where you're trying to stagger them. Yeah. And then after you stagger them, they get, they're get they open for more attacks. And once you do that, they really can take a chunk out of them. Um, but it's really about dodging and getting them to that point. Yeah, and, and certain like, builds, right? I mean, we know, both know about that SOB Baltius, the dome boss, with mm -hmm. his missiles and flamethrowers all over the place. You have to have certain builds for certain bosses at times. Sometimes you can't just be a one, uh, one build fits all, right? So you have to make adjustments based on the kind of boss that you fight. Um, so, you know, there's some pretty brutal bosses. Um, I know people were very um, concerned about the difficulty, but this is from software's, you know, MO. So, I, you know, I'm glad they did not change that aspect. But again, different builds are super important based on who you're fighting. Yeah, and, and with the good, we do need to talk about the bad. And when I look at the bad, as much as I think that the customization of Armor Core 6 and the boss battles are interesting, 
I felt like this game kind of felt like a button mashing fest. I feel like I was playing, uh, you know, a lot of people joke around that it was like I'm um, playing Guitar Hero. I'm trying to, I'm slamming on different buttons, combinations just to just to get some attacks off. And you know, I I almost bugged out because I was playing on my Xbox and I was playing on on a Pro Controller, right? And the Pro Controller says they still have issues with their RB buttons. And if you're pressing, if you're slamming, if you're playing Armor Core Six, I would highly recommend not to play on a Pro Controller because you might fall into the issue of your RB button might end up getting broken yeah, by the amount of times. Battles, you yeah, get away from those yeah. RB buttons. And, yeah, and that's and that's kind of part of the issue. Where and I'm not saying like it's oh it's a it's ruined the game like, but just because of the fact that a lot of your attacks are always going to be RB RT and, and for PlayStation Five controllers, it's the same thing. It's the same two yeah. duo buttons. But the point is, is like it's a lot of those combinations where you have to constantly dodge. You need to press, you know, certain whatever button it may be on, on multiple different consoles or PC, but you have to constantly dodge and fire, dodge and fire, dodge and fire. And it's the same combos over and over and over and over again. And and I, I don't like comparing it to other from software games because this is different, like with yeah. Elden Ring and Dark Souls. But you know, like I think that the magic of what those games were, well, yes, it's a dodge and attack type of game. But I feel like you're more precise in the styles of tacking that it's not like I'm just slamming on a button constantly to to attack something like, yeah, you, you dodge and then it's like a few slices and then you got to like you reset. But the way the armor core works is that it's like since it's guns, it's like you're constantly slamming on the buttons in order for them to fire. And I'm like that. That kind of seems like if you're not your I feel like my my forearms were getting uh, were getting torn apart uh, after, after a certain playthrough. So I was like, damn, I'm like slamming on all these buttons on a rapid rate. And I was doing pretty well with the boss hey, battles up until you think uh, from software. You have nice forearms now. I, I know. And that's kind of the thing. I'm like, listen, like as much as the combat is intense, which is not a bad thing. I just feel like the button mashing fest kind of like it's like you're not you're missing out on like the precise the, the preciseness of how from software games have always been. And I know it's different. I, I get it. It's a it's a. Gundam game versus uh, Elden Ring. Like I know it's different styles, but it's like at the same time. It's like you could have, you could have uh, adjusted it so not just me just constantly spamming buttons to see if I can uh, dodge and attack at the same time. Yeah. But yeah. So Angelica, what's a what's a bad thing that you saw? From um, I have two. Um, one's not like so bad for me, but maybe for a general audience, the the story is very basic. It's a yeah. very basic story. Um, if you're looking for an immersive mech story, you're not going to find it here. Um, and if you're looking for these long drawn out missions, you're also not going to find it here. So this might be a good thing for some and a bad thing for some, like the missions are pretty short. Um, they're, you know, they're pretty right away. You get it done, uh, objectively and you move on on the story thing. Um, so depending, I guess who you are, that could be a good or a bad thing, but another bad thing and to me, I think it's bad. No matter what people say, no cross play. Um, this game does do a three V three. Um, you know, they do have a PVP, uh, modes where one V one and three V three, but there is no crossplay, and to me, I just don't understand it. Especially with a game that is both on the old consoles and on the next gen consoles, um, this should not be a thing. I don't understand why that is, and I do think it's a very missed opportunity from From Software on crossplay. Yeah, and, and kind of building on your story uh, story point, I felt like that was one of the issues I had too. I feel like the story made me. It just it was disappointing. I mean, granted, I get yeah. it. Your the basic idea is you're a mercenary and you're hired. Yeah, you're hired and jobs. from software has these like a mass people like well the, the from software games don't have like a, a like a very immersive story, but like that's not true. Like they have a like, lot of like, lore. Be, they have like yeah, deep be, lore stories. About? That's literally or, what like the, they don't think it's a very good story, but like they have deep lore stories, and this feels like the very generic. I'm not gonna say exo primal level, but it's closer to exo primal than it is to Elden Ring. That's what I'll say on that. Yeah, I mean, the, listen. For anyone that says that Elder, uh, that Dark from Software stories are not in depth, or or I, I don't know what what they're smoking, but I do agree with you that the story here is like the bare minimum. I, I mean, the basic story of the game is that it's the world has become basically war torn, and it's controlled yeah. by massive industries that control militaries or hire mercenaries to do their bidding. And and on you know. I, uh, on Rubicon, there's a liberation front that's trying to fight against these industries that basically took yeah. over everything. Um, because obviously, uh, you know, energy and, and resources are really crucial at this point. Um, and you're just a mercenary kind of in the background or really in the in between of all this conflict. Where sometimes you might be hired by these businesses to do, to do their bidding while the liberation front might be hiring you to do their bidding. 
So you're kind of, it's in a predicament. You don't know really which side is the good side, but at the end of the day, like it's just, it feels like a lot of the missions you're doing have no real purpose behind them. I think one of the, uh, you know, one of the major boss battles, like sometimes like, yeah, we got to get, you got to get over the wall. Like this is, we got to break through like that. That seemed like a pretty important moment, but uh, there are times where it's like these smaller missions that we're doing, like what's the, why am I doing this? I know I'm getting paid to do this as a mercenary. We're trying to what build our cred. Like that, that's really what it is. We're trying to build our cred as a mercenary, but what's the purpose of that? What, why am I doing all this? And it feels like you don't really, it, whether it's, it's, it just takes so long to really feel connected to the story. And I get it. If you're trying to just go for a, just a fun game, not really a real story, then that's one yeah. thing. But, but that, but that's the point. Like that means that we have to look at this in that, in that realm then and say, all right, well then this is just one of those games that you just press a lot of buttons and you fight a lot of mechs and and then that's it not really looking for a story to give us a reason or give us motivation but with that being said let's talk about our official ratings and i think when i look at armor core 6 i feel like yes i think the problem a lot of people will have is that they'll compare this to things like elden ring or others because it's made from from software and i think it's not doing justice by armor course armor core 6 to say well, how are you compared to Elden Ring? Like Elden Ring is a game of the year, an open world fantasy game, you know, with crazy ass bosses and, and massive amount of content and, and combat that goes along with it. And Armor Core is a mech game, like a Gundam, uh, probably the best Gundam game we've probably yeah. ever played. Right. And yeah, and, and I feel like when you put that in context, I would probably give this an eight. I think this is a game that is a can be a fun experience. It can also be annoying as hell, right? Because it's a difficult game. It's not easy, which is not, it's not a bad thing. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with challenges. Um, I think the issues of like the constant button mashing just doesn't really give me much of like a diversification of the combat. Like I know that customization was great and I could pick different weapons I wanted, but at the same time, I feel like when you have this level of customization, maybe make it more precise and like how like you need to use a weapon in specific ways or like, Instead of me just constantly firing guns in every single way and just pressing dodge every two seconds because that's just how fast the gameplay is. Like, I feel like you'd be more immersed by having like your mech have like more, it's more has to be more precise in the way you shoot in the, instead of just button mashing the whole time. And the story I felt like was just lacking that it, it could have been better, but it just was, was limited. But I think the customizations and the different bosses you fight were still pretty good. So I would say buy this now. It is a fun game to play. If you are not into that super difficult style of games, and this might not be for you, but it is a it's a it's a fun Gundam level game. It's the best Gundam g game ever. And if you like mechs, if you like massive uh, explosions and, and fighting other mechs, this would be a good game to play. Um, I would say buy it now. I think it's it's still pretty damn good to play, but uh, there are some negatives. So Angelica, what's your rating, and should we buy this now, leader, or not at all? Yeah, currently, I think Metacritic and Open Critic have it around that 87, 86 range. And I think they're closer to what I am. So I'm at an 8.5. And I think if you're expecting, like you mentioned, Mars, an Elden Ring or Dark Souls experience, I think you're going to be disappointed. But I credit from software from showing the versatility um, because uh, the, the previous Armor Core games, the last five installments, have not been able to break 80 on on metacritic so to me i think it was a nice accomplishment to show the versatility that from software has um i had a similar fun experience to that of a previous game we uh recorded which was remnant 2 so i gave remnant 2 an 84 i think it's around there um i have it an 8.5 and i have it as a bind now um if you're like you mentioned mars you're into mechs you're into designing robots you're into these like fast pace high explosions you know battling other machines this is the game for you but if you're looking for an immersive story if you're looking for an elden ring experience then it probably won't be but i give it an 8.5 and i'm buying that what do you think about armor core 6 fires rubicon let us know what you think in the comments below and if you like this type of content make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content until next time this is mars man signing off peace out guys <laughs>